Hello and welcome again to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the VAT exam transactions or specifically the Section 109 of the National Internal Revenue Code. But before we go to that, dapat tingnan muna natin yung mga transactions that are generally VATable. So we have here, generally, the sale of goods, whether cash or on account, are VATable. Pero kung sale of services, only the cash receipts or cash collections are generally VATable. Now, these two are VATable if they are done or they are sold in the ordinary course of business or regularly sold. And of course, it is needed also that your sales as well as your collections when it comes to sale of services is above 3 million in a year. Because if it is not, then you might be subjected to another business tax known as the other percentage taxes and we have also other vatable transactions one of it is the sale of items used in the ordinary course of business so what does this mean these items are not generally sold in the ordinary course of business however they are used in the ordinary course of business, so when you sell them, they are also vatable. In order to be clear, let's have an example. Let's say you have your only truck and you sold it, and this truck is normally used to transport your goods of your business. So when you sell this truck, this is already vatable. Another vatable transaction is the imported items. Although, it is not necessary that these imported items shall be used or sold in the ordinary course of business. And in order to be clear again, let's have an example. An example is when you want to import a car which is only found abroad and it's not found here in the Philippines. Although that personal car will not be used in the ordinary course of business and will not be sold in the ordinary course of business, that is vatable. So generally, all of these are vatable. So what we're going to talk about later are those sales and imported or importation that are VAT exempt. So the following are VAT exempt transactions under Section 109A to 109BB of the tax code. So we have here letter A, the sale or importation of agricultural and marine food products in their original state livestock and poultry of a kind generally used as or yielding or producing foods for human consumption and breeding stock and genetic materials therefore so in order to understand this let's go directly to the examples pag you are selling or importing first vegetables or else chicken or pigs for consumption or for laying eggs or for reproduction of other chicks and baby piglets. So those are VAT exempt. Another is the lobster, the fishes, and other marine products for consumption. Another is the agricultural and marine food products which have undergone simple processes for preservation or packaging. Examples of this number four are dried or salted fish. So if you're going to sell this, even if you are going to have a revenue of 3 million or more in a year, that is VAT exempt. And also when you import these types or these examples, this will be VAT exempt. So that's it for Section 109A. Now let's go to Section 109B. So ito, sale or importation of fertilizers, seeds, seedlings, and fingerlings, fish, prawn, livestock, and poultry feeds, including ingredients, whether locally produced or imported, used in the manufacture of finished feeds. So, this is directly related sa letter A kanina because these things that have been mentioned here are necessary para maproduce yung marine and food products for human consumption. So, meaning the sale of importation of these things shall also be VAT exempt. And take note of this one. So, except for specialty feeds for race horses, fighting cocks, aquarium fish, zoo animals, and other animals considered as pets. So, these things or these animals are not for human consumption. Kaya naman yung feeds, your sale and importation of these feeds are considered as vatable. Yun yung section 109B. Now, let's go directly to section 109C.
So, kanina, I told you that generally, importation is vatable, whether or not it's directly used and sold in the ordinary course of business. So, here is an exception. Importation of personal and household effects belonging to residents of the Philippines, returning from abroad, and non-resident citizens coming to resettle in the Philippines provided that such goods are exempt from custom duties under the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines. Ano to? So you need to imagine yourself as a person na pupunta sa labas ng bansa para magbakasyon. Of course, it is inevitable na may bibilhin ka doon ng mga personal and household effects. Maaring mga damit, sapatos, and mga gamit sa bahay. So, you are a resident of the Philippines pa rin kahit na nagbakasyon ka abroad. So, upon returning here, those things that you have bought are considered as importation of personal and household effects. Tapos, even if you are in a resident citizen, Coming to resettle in the Philippines, meaning non-resident citizen ka, tapos babalik ka na dito, any personal and household effects na dadalhin mo dito, provided that such goods are exempted then sa custom duties under the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines, shall also be VAT exempt. So yun lang yung meaning ng Section 109B. C, C pala. So we have letter D. Dito sa letter D, is parehong-pareho lang sa konte ng nasa letter C. Except that, this is for persons coming to settle in the Philippines. Maaari itong mga foreigners na dito na nag-asawa, or Filipinos or their families and descendants who are now residents or citizens of other countries, such parties herein after referred to as overseas Filipinos, pag plano na nilang mag-settle dito sa Philippines, anything na dadalhin nila, na professional instruments and implements or tools of trade or occupation or employment. Example, if ever yung mga persons coming to settle here in the Philippines are engineers by profession. So, any professional instruments na dadalhin nila that is related sa kanilang occupation or employment, those are to be VAT exempt. Including pa nga yung wearing apparel nila at saka yung pets nila and personal and household effects. Pero dapat, yung dadalhin nila is for their own use and not for barter or sale. So, makikita yan sa quantity because if it is for your own use, so medyo konti lang yan. Pag marami yan, maaaring maput into question itong for their own use and not barter or sale. So, take note of this also. Dapat din, they are exempted from uh, custom duties and taxes ng customs because if not, then they are vatable. So, another to take note is that hindi kasama dito yung mga vehicles, vessels, aircrafts, and machineries and other similar goods for use in manufacture which are subject to duties, taxes, and other charges. Ito lang talaga, professional in instruments, implements, tools of trade, occupation, or employment, wearing apparel, domestic animals, and personal and household effects. So, this is also... A, an exemption of the general rule that all importation, whether used in the ordinary course of business or sold in the ordinary course of business or not, are vatable. So that's it for letter D. Now let's go now to letter E. So if you have service revenues because you're giving services, pero subject sa a percentage tax under the Title 5 of the Tax Code as amended or specifically yung nasa Section 116 to 127 of the Tax Code, then you are already VAT exempt. So ano tong nasa Section 116 to 127? Uh, Listahan lang to ng mga entities at mga transactions that are subject to other percentage taxes. So pag andito ka, and you're already paying for percentage taxes, then hindi ka na dapat magbayad ng value-added taxes because percentage taxes at saka value-added taxes cannot be charged simultaneously. So, yun yung nasa letter E. And we have letter F. Pag mayroon kang service revenues because you are an agricultural contract grower, that is already VAT exempt na yung mga revenues mo. So, anong meaning ng agricultural contract growers? So, I have an acquaintance na pinapaalaga lang yung mga chicken ng magnolia. So, meaning the magnolia is already giving everything, the feeds as well as the chicks, 
Tapos yung trabaho ng acquaintance ko is palakihin lang yon. Now, Magnolia pays him uh, some money because of the services that he is giving. So, even if lumampas ng 3 million yung binabayad ni Magnolia doon sa acquaintance ko, but exempt yung mga revenues na nakuha niya. Now, the second part of this F is, if you are milling for others, palay into rice, corn into grits, and sugar cane into raw sugar. So, your revenues are also VAT exempt. Pero again, dapat, your milling for others, palay into rice lang, corn into grits, and sugar cane into raw sugar lang. So, yan lang tatlo. So, if you are milling for other items, then your revenues will be considered VATable. So, that's letter F. Now, we have letter G. Dito, if you are a hospital and giving medical and dental services, veterinary services, then the revenues that you will earn is already VAT exempt. However, if you are a professional, itong mga professional kasi na nag-give ng ganitong mga services, normally, meron to silang mga clinic, then the revenues that you are going to earn are VATable. Ganito lang to kasimple. And we have letter H. So, if you are providing for educational services, however, even if you are a private educational institution na accredited ka naman ng DepEd, CHED, at saka TESDA, and those rendered by government edu educational institutions, the revenues, the service revenues nyo po is VAT exempt. So, may mga educational services that are VATable pala. So, those are uh, not recognized or they are not accredited by DepEd. Like for example, review centers and tutorial centers. If ever lumampas ng 3 million yung revenues nila in a year, they are already considered VATable. But if you are part here, even if lumampas yan, naging 10 million or 20 million, those are VAT exempt. So that's it for letter H. Next is letter I. Services rendered by individuals pursuant to an employer-employee relationship. So meaning, even if you are an employee na may salaries na more than 3 million a year, such salaries will not be VATable. VAT exempt pa rin yan. So that's letter I. And we have letter J. So if merong services na nirender ang regional or area headquarters established in the Philippines by multinational corporations, Tapos, yung tabaho nitong regional or area headquarters na to is just supervisory, communicating, and coordinating lang ng mga affiliate subsidiaries and other branches of such multinational corporations in the Asia-Pacific region. Tapos, hindi naman nag-earn or nagdi-derive ng income from the Philippines tong mga regional area headquarters. The services that they render are VAT exempt. So, that's letter J. And letter K, Transactions which are exempt under the international agreements to which the Philippines is a signatory or under special laws are VAT exempt also. So, ito, merong ka-agreement ang Philippines na other country na dapat exempt to sa mga taxes. So, ang gagawin lang ni Philippines is to honor that one as a matter of respect to the other country. Actually, ito yung principle ng international committee which is a an inherent limitation ng taxation power, if you can still remember. So that's it for I, J, and K. Now we have letter L, sales by cooperatives, agricultural cooperatives. So ito medyo mahaba-haba. So para maintindihan to, let's try to break this down. So you need to be the agricultural cooperative muna dito. Sabi dito, if you are the agricultural cooperative and you are going to sell to your members, Kahit na yung products is produced or not produced by the cooperative, then that particular transaction, the sales revenue right here is VAT exempt. But in order for your sale to non-members to be VAT exempt, dapat yung binibenta mo are only those produced by the cooperative. So meaning, if you're going to sell to non-members products not produced by the cooperative, then that is VATable. There is also a chance na yung mga importation ni agricultural cooperatives from abroad is VAT exempt. Pero hindi lahat ng importation. 
only the importation related to farm inputs, machineries, equipment, including spare parts, which should be directly or exclusively used for their production lang. Yung mga VAT exempt na mga imported items ni agricultural cooperatives. So, again, these three transactions are VAT exempt under this. However, the agricultural cooperative must be a duly registered and in good standing dapat siya sa Cooperative Development Authority. So, if these are the transactions and this is present, then the sale and this importation are VAT exempt. Sunod yung letter M. So, we have gross receipts from lending activities by credit or multipurpose cooperatives duly registered and in good standing with the Cooperative Development Authority. Ang ibig sabihin nito, if there is a cooperative kahit marami pa yung business, pero isa sa mga business niyan ay lending activity. So, any gross receipts na nare-receive ng multipurpose cooperative na bayad ng mga nangutang are VAT exempt. Yun lang yung meaning nitong letter M. But then again, dapat itong cooperative na to should be registered and should be in good standing with the Cooperative Development Authority. Now, letter N is also related to a cooperative. Yung mga sales ng hindi agricultural, hindi electric, at saka hindi credit cooperative. Basta yung capital contribution ng isang member, ng each member nila is 15,000 or less. The sales of those types of cooperatives are VAT exempt. Regardless kung ilan lahat silang mga members, maaring 1,000 members yan, we do not care, or 2,000 or 100, we do not care, as long as yung each member has a contribution of 15,000 or less. So that's it for letter N. And we have letter O. Export sales by persons who are not VAT registered are VAT exempt. So, Meron tayong next lesson about export sales also. Export sales ng persons who are VAT registered are considered as zero rated sales. Although the zero rated sales will be emphasized on the next video lectures. So that's the meaning of letter O. And then we have letter P which talks about VAT exam sales of properties. Again, the sales of real properties are generally VATable except for this na nakalista po dito. So we have the first one, the sale of real properties not primarily held for sale to customers or held for lease in the ordinary course of trade or business. So para mas klaro, we have an example right here. The selling of your own private rest house. So since this is your own private rest house, hindi naman siguro uh, in the ordinary course of business nagbibenta ka ng rest house. As well as since this is a rest house, malamang hindi ito ginagamit in the ordinary course of business or held for lease. So this is a good example of what is mentioned here sa number one. And number two, even if you are selling in the ordinary course of business, low-cost housing as defined by RA number 7279, you can read this for further information. Um, these things are still not vatable. So, what is this low-cost housing? One of the clues that are mentioned here is RA number 7279. These are houses which cost 2 million or below. So, related also dito sa number 2 ang number 3. So, even if ordinary course of business, nagbibenta ka ng real properties known as specialized housing with a cost of 450000 or below, this is VAT exempt still. And number 4, we have sale of residential lot valued at 1.5 million or below is VAT exempt. However, if it is exceeding 1.5 million that is already taxable so this is pretty simple and straightforward however there is a twist so what is the twist adjacent residential lots although covered by separate titles and or separate tax declarations when sold or disposed to one and the same buyer whether covered by one or separate deed of conveyance shall be presumed as a sale of one residential lot. So what's the meaning of this? So let's have an illustration. So the illustration, we have lot number one owned by Mr. A. 
and adjacent to it is lot number 2 which is owned by Mr. B. Now, in this particular illustration, Mr. A and Mr. B sold their lots to Mr. C, the common buyer. So, B sold it at 1 million which is below 1.5 and also Mr. A sold his lot at 900,000 which is also below 1.5. However, according to this twist, this will not be treated as separate sales. Instead, it will be treated as one sale. So, if that's the case, the sales price will not be 901 million. Instead, it will be 1.9 million, the sum of the two. And since 1.9 million exceeds 1.5 million, then this particular sale by Mr. A and Mr. B are considered as vatable. Another is that we have... The sale of house and lot and other residential dwellings valued at 2.5 million. So what's the meaning of this? So if it is in your ordinary course of business, you are selling house and lot and other residential dwellings like condominiums at 2.5 million and below, what exempt However, if ever more than 2.5 million yung value, that is already considered as vatable. Now, Here's a twist to this letter P. Starting 2021, the only sale of real properties that will be considered as VAT exempt ay tatlo na lang. So we have the not in the ordinary course of business and the sale of specialized housing as well as this number 3, the sale of house and lot and other residential dwellings valued at 2.5 million pesos and below. So, the others that are not mentioned will not be applicable starting 2021. So, that's it for letter P. We have Q. Lease of residential units with a monthly rental per unit not exceeding 15,000 pesos regardless of the amount of aggregate rentals received by the lessor during the year. So if your operations is nagpapalis ng residential units tapos nagkukollect ka ng rent na below 15,000 or 15,000 lang, so, what exempt siya? Regardless kung magkano lahat-lahat ng nakuha mo as the lessor during the year, kahit pa uh, madami or lumampas ng 3 million yung nakuha mong aggregate rentals because you have a lot of residential units regardless fat exempt pa rin to. the question is what if the rentals per residential unit exceeds 15,000 per month is it already vatable the answer is if the annual rentals collected does not exceed 3 million kahit pa nag exceed ng 15,000 per month yung rent na chinarge mo, it is still VAT exempt but subject to 3% other percentage taxes na siya. But if ever lumampas ng 3 million tapos lumampas pa ng 15,000 per month yung chinarge mo sa residential unit, that is already VATable. So meaning, what was mentioned here sa Q, this is already VAT exempt and also other percentage taxes exempt also. So that's Q. And we have letter R. So sa letter R, when your operations is related sa sale at saka importation and printing or publication of books, VAT exempt yan yung, ser ser yung revenues mo at saka yung importation mo. And the second one is if ever your operation is the publication and printing of newspaper, magazine, review, or bulletin na dapat nag appear siya at regular intervals tapos fix din yung prices at not principally devoted to the publication of paid advertisements. Yung revenues mo, if ever, are VAT exempt. So, it's very important na if ever we're talking about newspaper, magazine, review, and bulletin, dapat regular intervals, fixed prices, at saka not devoted principally to the publication of paid advertisements. So, that's it for R. And we have letter S.
So, pag may international carriers and they are carrying passengers from Philippines to abroad, but exempt yung mga revenues nila. So, sino tong mga international carriers? International carriers are foreign carriers. Uh, example of which, siguro yung mga Singapore Airlines and etc. Pag nagpapasakay sila ng passengers from here to abroad, yung kita nila sa mga ticket ng passengers are not vatable. We have letter T. So, if your operations is related to sale and pagpapalis ng passenger or cargo vessels and aircraft, including engine equipment and spare parts thereof for domestic or international transport operations, yung revenues mo in selling as well as leasing of those items to domestic or international transport operations is VAT exempt. And of course, if you are going to import cargo vessels and aircraft, including this, they are also VAT exempt. Pero, dapat daw, you are going to subject yourself to the requirements on restriction on vessel importation and mandatory vessel retirement program established by the Marina. So, that's it for letter T. And letter U is dedicated for those carriers, whether domestic, whether international carrier siya. Basta meron siyang international shipping operations. Example, si PAL. Although domestic yan, meron yang international shipping operations. So, pag si PAL ka, your importation for fuel, goods, and supplies is VAT exempt. Pero dapat such fuel, goods, and supplies shall be used exclusively or shall pertain to the transport of goods and passengers from a port in the Philippines tapos dapat directly to a foreign port or vice versa. So meaning, Philippine port to Philippine port na biyahe, dapat di mo gagamitin tong fuel goods and supplies na inimport mo kung gusto mong maging VAT exempt. Now, if ever, ginamit mo to, Okay lang naman gamitin, pero those used other than what was mentioned here sa letter U will already be vatable. So, pwede, di, pwede lang naman na maging VAT exempt din even if from Philippine port to Philippine port ka kung necessary talaga. For example, you can stop to unload passengers or cargoes from abroad or to load passengers and cargoes bound for abroad. Okay lang yon. So that's it for letter U. Now we are on section 109V. So if you're a bank or non-bank financial intermediary performing quasi-banking functions and other bank and other non-bank financial intermediaries katulad ng money changers and pawn shops, you're already subject to the percentage tax under sections 121 and 122. And since you're subject already to the percentage tax, hindi ka na dapat magbayad ng VAT. So VAT exempt ka na. Because VAT and other percentage taxes cannot be imposed simultaneously. So that's it for letter V. And we have W. So sometimes if you are selling or leasing goods and services to senior citizens and persons with disabilities, you will be VAT exempt. Pero it depends. For example, when we talk about senior citizen, pag transport or carrier ka or transporting passenger yung operations mo, yung fare na matatanggap mo sa senior citizen is already VAT exempt whether you are transporting them by land or by air and by sea travel. And of course, since in your citizen, if ever you're engaged in the hotel and restaurant and recreation centers, you are also VAT exempt sa mga revenues na natatanggap mo sa kanila. As well as, uh, if you are in the operations of concerts, cin cinemas, carnival, theaters, and etc., the admission fees that you will receive is also VAT exempt. But exempt din kasi if ever you are selling medicines and drug purchases to senior citizen. As well as if you are giving them medical, dental, and diagnostic and laboratory services. So, but exempt na yung receive mo sa kanila. As well as if you are a professional physician, so may clinic ka, or you're a health worker like caregiver in all private facilities, so privado na facility, your income or revenues coming from your senior citizens na mga clients is VAT exempt. And lastly, 
If you are into operations of funeral and burial expenses, but exempt na din pag yung client mo is a senior citizen. So that's it for the senior citizen. For PWDs, they are very much similar because PWDs are also exempted in VAT sa itong pito. Pero meron lang mga uh, mild na mga changes. Like for example, sa PWD, in all drug stores ang medicines and drug purchases. As well as when we talk about professional fees for attending physicians, dito sa senior citizen, my health workers. Dito naman sa PWD, walang health workers na sinabi. And dito sa senior citizen, sa private facilities lang na VAT exempt itong mga senior citizen. Dito sa PWD, public and private facilities. So, that's it for letter W. Let's go now to letter X, so which is transfer of property in merger or consolidation, which is pursuant to section 40 of the tax code as amended. So, ito yung mga transfers na VAT exempt. So, I'll give you two examples. The first example is si Mr. A. Uh, contributed a property to a certain corporation para makontrol niya yung corporation. Uh, pwede din naman alone niya makontrol yun or pwede din with other three persons. So, maximum of four persons yung sinabi dito sa transfer sa section 40. So, meaning, yung pag-transfer ni Mr. A ng property para lang makontrol yung corporation is an example of what was mentioned here sa X. So, non-vatable yun. Yung second na example is, when we talk about merger and consolidation, dalawang companies yan tapos mag-merge and magiging isang company na lang. Like for example, company X and company Y tapos nag-merge, naging company Z. So that's an example of merger or consolidation. Now si company X na part ng merger, if ever magta-transfer siya ng property, in order to get shares sa company Z, which is the new corporation, that particular transfer of property para lang makakuha ng shares of stock ng bagong company na si company Z is one of the examples of this letter X. So that is also non-vatable or VAT exempt yan. So that's it for letter X. Now, let's go to letter Y. We have association dues, membership fees, and other assessments and charges collected on a purely reimbursement basis by homeowners associations and condominium established under Republic Act 9904, Magna Carta for Homeowners and Homeowners Association. So, normally, ang example nito is, what if there are people sa condominium? So, Yung mga owners ng condominium sometimes or most of the times gumagawa yan ng homeowners association na nagko-contribute yung mga members or yung mga homeowners for the maintenance and upkeep ng kanilang building. Like for example, my maintenance personnel na hinire mga janitor and mga security guard for peace and order. So, may mga sweldo yon So, yung mga sweldo nun is coming from the contributions ng mga members ng homeowners association. So, yung mga contributions nila, association dues, membership fees, and other assessments and charges, para lang ma-reimburse yung mga gastos para ma-maintain yung kanilang building, shall not be taxed with VAT. So, mga VAT exempt dapat yon and we have letter Z. So, if you are selling gold to the Banko Central ng Pilipinas, VAT exempt yung revenues mo. Pero dapat, sale of gold lang talaga. When you are going to sell other minerals to the Banko Central, VATable na. So, that's it for letter Z. And we have AA. So, ito, bago lang to ngayon sa train law. So, beginning January 1, 2019, so ang mga pharmaceuticals, kung pharmaceutical ka, when you sell drugs and medicines na normally prescribed for diabetes, high cholesterol, and hypertension, such sale mo is not vatable. Now, let's go to section 109BB. So, this is very long, so let's break it down in simple terms. So, this 
section is for those who has gross annual sales or receipts that do not exceed 3 million pesos or 3 million pesos and below lang yung sales nila or receipts. So that's the first requisite para ma-under dito. At saka yung ikalawa is that the ordinary course of business whether sale by yan or lease of goods or properties or performance of service are not considered as VAT exempt transactions under section 109A to AA. So, dalawa lang talaga para ma-under ka dito sa section 109BB. Again, I'll repeat it. Pag yung sales or receipts ng entity is less than 3 million or 3 million exact, as well as yung ordinary course of business niya are not considered as VAT exempt transactions mentioned in section 109A to AA, then the entity is under this section 109BB. VAT exempt pa rin, pero under sa section 109BB. Now, let's talk about the note here. Sabi dito, self-employed individuals and professionals availing of 8% on gross sales and or receipts and other non-operating income under sections 24 and etc. of the NIRC shall also be exempt from the payment of 12%. So, yung mga pumili nitong 8% on gross sales and or receipts na self-employed individuals and professionals are also VAT exempt. So, what is this 8%? And bakit if ever Pumili ka nito ng 8%, fat exempt ka din. So, let's talk about that. What is this 8%? Actually, guys, if you are a sole proprietorship, meaning you are a self-employed individual or a professional, and your sales or receipts is more than 3 million, the possible taxes that you are going to pay is first is the 12% VAT and the second is the income taxes. So, hiwalay pa yung income taxes at saka iba pa tong 12% VAT. But if your sales is less than 3 million pesos, so generally, the taxes that you are going to pay is 3% other percentage taxes at saka yung income taxes. But upon passing the train law, may option na yung mga businesses or sole proprietors na nandito. Yung sales nila is less than 3 million. So, may loan silang option. Ito yung option 1 nila at saka yung option 2 is the 8% gross sales or receipts tax. So, ito, kung pipiliin to ng businessman, ito na yung kahalili nitong 3% at saka income taxes. So, bakit VAT exempt? Siyempre, again, yung nakakapili lang nito ay eh yung may mga sales na less than 3 million pesos. That is why it's very clear na kapag self-employed individual ka at saka professional ka na nag-avail ng 8% on gross sales or receipts, dapat you are exempt from payment of VAT because again, your sales is less than 3 million pesos. Before we end this video, there are some additional VAT exempt transactions based on the CREATE law. So there are 5 and 1 to 3 is related to the COVID-19 pandemic. So madali lang tong i-memorize. So let's first start with number 1. If you're engaged in the sale and importation of capital equipment and raw materials for personal protective equipment productions, then your sale or importation is already VAT exempt. However, this VAT exemption is only from January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2023. So number two is still related to covid so, we have sale and importation of all prescription drugs, medical supplies, devices, and equipment for COVID-19. So, the effectivity is still January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2023. And the third one is still related to COVID-19. So, this is sale and importation of vaccines for COVID-19. So, if your operations is selling and importation of vaccines, then your transactions are VAT exempt. So again, this if it, the effectivity of this one starts on January 1, 2021 to December 31, 2023 only. And we have number 4, which is not already related to COVID-19, which is if you are selling and importing prescription drugs for cancer, mental illness, tuberculosis, and kidney-related diseases, your revenues are VAT exempt. And this one starts, or the effectivity of this one starts on January 1, 2021 onwards. And number five is the sale of e-books. 
So, this is already VAT exempt from January 1, 2021 onwards. So, that's it for the additional VAT exempt transactions based on the new CREATE law. Thank you for watching.